Good morning, everyone, uh, the ravers of Berlin, of Berlinale. Um, it's wonderful you've made it here to the very first talk of the Teddy Talks this, of this year. And by very first one, we mean 12 p.m., which is maybe unfair of the Teddy organization to make us be here on, at 12 p.m. to talk about clubbing and raving. Maybe some of us came directly from, who knows, from somewhere. Uh, <laughs> from the dark, dark chambers. Um, I'm, I'm Anna David, one of the programmers at the Berlinale Panorama. Um, and uh, on my left side is Anthony Lapia, the director of uh, After and a French film, and Anas Hirsch, the director of uh, Drifter, a German film. Both of them will premiering their very first features. So congratulations on that, and thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Um, we we here so we're here to to um, to talk about uh, time after time club culture and the concept of time in queer cinema um, sounds like a very theoretical and um, kind of con conceptual um, topic but we'll we'll keep it uh, grounded to the films of after and uh, and drifter um, so while programming this year's panorama. Um, we were very, very happily surprised with having watched and loved and considered and loved and ended up selecting three films that take place in, in the club uh, culture. Um, two of them um, I've mentioned before, and the other film being uh, La Bête dans la Jungle from Patrick Chiha, uh, which has also been shown at, at Panorama. Um, so these are films that invite us uh, to the club as a social place, a place of encounters, and a space of timeless seduction and seemingly endless possibilities, both personal and collective. Um, and I think it's, it's important to mention what we mean, what we understand as the club. Uh, some people have different experiences, and um, I'll, I'll define it maybe for the sake of this conversation as a broad concept. Um, and I'll define it in, in three ways. I think nowadays is the club is one of the in contemporary society and experience one of the few places where time is experienced so radically. Um, one can experience a suspension of it if one allows oneself to a durational experience, maybe. And it also, we can also experience time inside a club by being in oneself in a very focused way and forgetting what the world outside is, is happening. Um, and the experiences that maybe we leave behind or bring into the club. Mm -hmm. um, the club is also a place of freedom, where one can experience the biggest degree of, of freedom in a social context, of course, and one where the rules, the most important rules to remember is to enjoy oneself, of course, while also taking care of others and being respectful. And that's everything else, it's up to the people who are there. Um, and also it's a place where possibilities of spontaneous, spontaneous and the unknown are the biggest nowadays, I think. Um, we, if we offer ourselves to it, we don't know what's going to happen at, during a night. And I think there's a few places in contemporary society now where we, we don't know what's happening. You know? like in the sense of we go to work and we kind of know how our day are going to, is going to unfold. And we meet our families and we kind of know what's the dynamics that we're going to find there and what can happen. But spending 12 hours or 24 hours or whatever in a club, you don't know who you're going to meet and you don't know what might happen um, if you allow yourself for that and if you're interested in that experience, of course. Um, so these films, they've, done, they've approached the club in different forms and lingu languages and narratives and they pay attention to distinct characters and communities who perhaps though have something similar to hope for and desire for in the dance floor. So I am at talk about their inspirations and references and decision making and approach in, in crafting their films. Um, and maybe because not everyone has seen both films or each film, I'll ask you each to Hannes and uh, Anthony to introduce your films briefly, their stories. You want to start or you want me to? Uh, the mic is there, <laughs> as you prefer. Okay, hi, I'm Hannes. I'm the director of Drifter. Um, I live in Berlin since 15 years, and 
I uh, I missed a bit uh, stories that me and all my friends and all the people that I meet in the clubbing scene in Berlin, but also in other capitals, are experiencing. Um, and I collected many little different stories, um, emotions, um, character developments that I was watching around me and tried to make a story out of them, which took a long time, several years. And I was writing more like again and again on the script. I left the script for some years. And then in the end, we shot um, during like one year in 2022, we shot Drifter. And the project just became bigger and bigger. And yeah, now it's in Panorama. And I'm very happy to have this platform <laughs> for these stories here. And I'm also very happy to be invited to this talk today because it means very much to me. Thank you. Yes, yeah, same for me. Like the, the, we have a bit like similar production process too. Like the, the movie started as a, as a mid-length movie and finally turns into a feature. So yeah, it, um, it drifts. <laughs> <laughs> And so in um, contextualizing also the story of Drifter, is a, it talks, talk, talks about a, a young boy who's new to Berlin, maybe 22 years old, and um, comes with uh, hopes and expectations. And uh, what we experience through the entire the film of Drifter, or experience or witness, is the process of um, immersion, immersion into a gay subculture of clubbing scene in Berlin. And this boy, Moritz, the main character, um, ends up meeting a lot of people and ends up also having, a, obviously, a, um, a narrative arc of uh, development and finding oneself and um, maybe even lifestyles, um, and romantic approaches, etc. Um, so it takes place during a lot of time, during these months and months of, for Moritz. And for after, uh, for those who have not seen, perhaps, of Anthony, it takes place during one single night, in very, very well immersed in, in a club, in a rave scene, in a rave uh, uh, party. And what we ended up see after, uh, seeing a, after a lot of, uh, of dancing, heavy clubbing and heavy dancing, um, is this immersion of two lead characters who go home and talk about um, their hopes and uh, who they are and their political differences and approach to the same topics. Um, okay, so this being said, I think um, I think it's important to to ask why was the club for you, both Hannes and Anthony, the place that you wanted to set your stories. Um. Um, I, I, I've been clubbing before making films from, for me, like it's been, um, and since I've been to clubs, I always wanted like to put a camera inside because I find it's like a really nice cinematic place to make, uh, to shoot, like because it's like so immersive, so much, I don't know, likes, bodies, faces, uh, the music, like the intensity, the drugs, I don't know, like there's something so intense and so, um, I don't know, overwhelming that I, Always thought that it could be a good place to make um, to make a film and to make it as a, to make it as a proper subject too, because I don't know most in most movies like the the club scenes are li really little moment like where it expresses like only one emotions like or the char the main character just enjoy to dance or not enjoy to dance and it's a bit always the same and so I just wanted to make something like I don't know like something serious about that because I've never found it in any films and I never felt in any films that I've seen, um, the experience that I, was f that, that, that I was living when I was clubbing. So that's how it goes, basically, for the project, for the, for the, um, the desire to make this film. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that's interesting, the fact that it's not only where you set your story, but also it's actually what about the story is, right? Mm. The clubbing um, culture and... Yes, and yeah, it was like to... I don't know if it's if I could define the film as a thing about like clubbing culture, but it's more like it's really subjective and immersive way of approaching the the subject. And I really wanted to I don't know to to give to the viewer like the, the experience that I left. That's why I we try with the mise en scène to make something really immersive and really like um, deep inside the experience of dancing and uh, crossing people and talking with people. I don't know like something like really simple, direct, and also abstract. Then, um, because I think I don't think the film like it says something about like the I don't know the the clubby 
feel the comic culture somehow, but it's not direct. I think it's because like of the body, the, the people who are involved into it, like the people who are in like um, we, we we shoot it, like the people who are interpreting the characters. So, but I think the the subject is not like um, approached by the by the story of the film. It's like a bit aside. And for you, Hannes? Yeah, it's funny that you. Uh, Always my, my film is seen as a club film, but actually, I don't know how many people of you uh, have seen the film, actually. Um, we, could, we could ask, maybe, actually, can who, we, can we who ask have seen who After? Seen after? Uh, yeah, it's so annoying, like, uh, it's, uh, I know. It's, uh, and who has seen Drifter? And a Drifter? Okay. I can send you a link yeah. if you Some want. <laughs> <laughs> It's important to mention that there will be more screenings coming of both films. Um, yeah, and hopefully you can get a ticket soon. And also, be, I'm sure it will be distributed, um, Hannah's your film. Me, I don't know. <laughs> to be seen, to be continued. Yeah, because uh, like half of my film doesn't play in a club. Um, and I think for from the view of the main protagonist, uh, it's very important that in this first half of the film, th there's a lot of resistance inside of him against the clubbing world which is also a personal thing of myself, that I always looked on the clubbing world as a very superficial, hedonistic world in the beginning. Um, and this is also what the main character, Moritz, when he comes to Berlin, like there's one little part where he uh, ends up in a car where people are taking drugs and he's just uh, uh, afraid of this world and just then goes with this older, more responsible guy, Noah, who has like a stable life, like a heteronormative family life, kind of. And um, then in the very middle part of the film, he's like Moritz ends up in a, like a dinner with, with mostly straight couples, and they're playing, let's say, boring board games. And then just after this, um, the film makes a very hard cut and got, just goes directly into the techno world. So I tried to put these two worlds side by side. And then the club is the place where Moritz starts to develop himself. So you do use as the clubs, because if Moritz goes to so many different parties, and we talked about it yesterday, actually, the fact that um, there's a return during all those months. There's a returning scene, which is a club scene, and they're always different. Um, do you want to maybe talk about the importance of how the clubbing experience is defining the character of Moritz? Yeah, uh, yesterday there was, a, uh, in, after the screening, we had a talk with the audience, and there was this idea of, OK, Moritz is like a blank page, and he comes to Berlin. And when you come as a blank page to Berlin, Berlin and the clubbing world just writes onto this page, and you are becoming what Berlin wants you to become. <laughs> um, this was important for me, um, this emptiness of a lot of like people, or that just the biography uh, doesn't really play a role sometimes. And then there's these moments then in the club, maybe some of you can relate to this, that you're in the toilet and everybody's high, and then people come up with their super personal stories, and you see, oh my god. Like Also, I liked it in your film that they're talking about what they do in their real life. Like, what real life is a thing, but what, jo what jobs they have. So this was important for me. And then also to, sh to um, show different kind of clubs, because I don't know, like my mother also watched the film, but I think for her it was just a lot of clubs. But I tried to differentiate them um, and really show, like, this is a techno club. This is the after hour on the rooftop. This is more like a funny birthday um, club where people do more MDMA. This is the club where they do more, more ketamine. And I think if you know what I'm talking about, this was very important to me to really uh, make, make it authentic and that the audience can find themselves. I think it's important. Don't forget where you are, Anthony. Uh, what are you going to say? To yeah. like I think it's important also to, to, to just to mention that um, of course, club culture can, it's specific for each person, and uh, we 
people will gravitate towards the ones that f experience it the same way. Um, not every, uh, these films do mention and depict scenes of uh, drug consumption as a recreative uh, process of achieving a mentality and a space where you can maybe achieve freedom, et cetera, be it, be it is something that you know, society during the daytime um, maybe gives you a hard time and you can release yourself, etc. But it's also important to, so we'll be talking a bit in that context, but of course I think it's important to make a parenthesis that not, not every club culture has to include drug consumption. Um, and it's just, we're just very like, we can talk about maybe later that uh, how to depict this in a respectful, um, correct, and um, well, also authentic way no? and responsible way of, of talking about it. Um, Anthony, you were going to say um, something. No, no, we switch of subjects, so maybe. Oh, no, but go on, go on. <laughs> no, it was the thing about like the blank page. Just, sorry, the, it was just it's a bit the same in my film, like the but the, it's not at the same scale because it's not like a one main character film, but it's like most of the people like you don't know them in the in the in the beginning of the film, and then you discover them uh, just like as faces and doing like uh, I don't know like repetitive activities, like just encountering each other, like I don't know having cigarette dancing together, like nothing much. Like and so like the um, the viewer can just project himself in everybody like project stories and they don't speak so much like about outside when they are in the club like um, it was like I don't know because of the of the of the script of the film like they talk when they are in the apartment the second part like when the when the two main characters go into the apartment and the conversation conversation starts so I didn't make like any scene like in the film with a with like long conversation in the toilets with someone you don't know like and told you all your life and you do uh, the same and I did I, I didn't make this kind of scene in the in the film, because there were another part who was uh, taking in charge this type of um, of language and uh, approach of language, but um, yes, there's also blank pages and no like and uh, usual character building process, but like as a direct process of like there's like kaleidoscope of faces and it's just faces and just people who don't know anything about them, you can project a lot on them too. So it's uh, I don't know, there's a little connection. I don't know if you uh, uh, the same film. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, when I watched your film, I was like, wow, he, he kind of had the exact same uh, pictures, like the first uh, 10 minutes are just like observations of people dancing. And I love these images so much because it's really about like, okay, the kind of, you, you, you see all these people and you it happens, it's a club experience that you, you have normally, that you look at this person and you can imagine, oh, what per, what life is, does this person have, or maybe it could be my life, or maybe I could become this person if I look like them, or and um, for me, this like uh, different characters, different identities is a big topic in the film, and Moritz is changing and becoming a new person, and we are following in my film like this part, this uh, storyline of a main protagonist, which is very traditional storyline of a coming of age film. But I also like to come back, um, I always wanted also a bit to show like a society and to have a like uh, um, an outside view on like a sociological view on people dancing. And I had two, two moments, one is in the very beginning. There were just extras that I filmed in Möbel Olfe. And then later, there's this dancing part, which is very similar to yours, yes. um, when they're clubbing in the big techno club, uh, the first one. So you, you were mentioning um, the people that you filmed and the extras. And um, I think it's important maybe to, to ask you, um, how, what did you want to find and what did you wanted from the actors who you chose um, to portray? What are you looking for in them? to portray the, the specific clubbing and, of course, story um, that you've, we wanted to, to bring on stage. Because it's, uh, they have to give quite phys physical performances, and they also have to be uh, comfortable with becoming vulnerable as actors, you know? maybe not looking super good, uh, taking drugs, etc. cetera. Um, do you want to tell us about how did you approach this casting and uh, finding people for the film? Uh, the the film like is there's a, there's kind of like two parts like the the, the picture of the film is like a girl met a boy in a party and they go in after party at her at his place at her place 
So um, this casting was like classic casting with like two actors, friend of friend actors who are professional and not their character basically. And um, for the clubbing part, like you know, there's dozens of um, characters, secondary characters, and it's like composed like with uh, people I made in part, I, I met in parties, like non-professional, also a bunch of professional actors who are like uh, friends of uh, of the main actress. They are playing a friend, so I ask her to make the casting of them, like to give me names of people, and I. I picked them like in the friends basically and who were available. <laughs> it was a lot of like I don't know like technical and I don't know like uh, time constraint on everything on everything. So the, cho the the choices have been like a bit like a bit not random but oh it goes basically. We ended up the casting like maybe like three days before. We changed the casting during the shooting. There was someone who was supposed to act someone, but finally we just pick an extra to, to play the role because the other guy didn't want to play it. So, because he was, I don't know, modeling stuff and he didn't want to stay, see, taking drugs. So, it's, uh, and so it just, just don't come anymore to the shooting. So we need to find someone else. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's a bit like, um, there's a lot of, not, not so much randomness because like the actors, it was like all the, um, all the network of the people who were organizing the party for the films because we made real parties basically for the, for the film with like real DJ sets and like uh, real music and like real parties basically. So it was like mostly like a normal club where we were shooting like fictional sequences inside. So. That's how it goes, and with all the extras and stuff, like all the faces who are in the film, like it was like the people like just going to the parties, basically. So when the casting, it was like that. <laughs> cool. So so it's a mix of people who were clubbers and and also not clubbers. Yeah, exactly. Yes, and it's like it came, and there's there's um, there's a little sense on that, like the people, like the main characters of the film, like are just like more a bit like, more normal people that are not hardcore clubbers. They are just people who love to club, like a bit like me, like for a long time, like I love a normal life. I'm not like digging deep into clubbing, like uh, it's not my life. Let's say I'm not 20 again. <laughs> I'm not 20 anymore. <laughs> and um, and then uh, so um, it kind of fits well, basically. It, uh, I don't know, like um, all this randomness just fits well at the end of like the soci sociological somehow approach, even if it's not like direct frontally like said in the film. I think it's um, we are lucky at the end, and it uh, it makes something a bit coherent. <laughs> Yeah, the, the casting was very traditional. I was just looking for good actors. But of course, um, they also had to have the physiologic, physiognomy, physiognomy. Yes, physiognomy of people who go to clubs because they, they look different than people who are sitting in the office every day because they're just every weekend, maybe they're like not eating. <laughs> so, or, <coughs> no, but it's, it's real, like you can yeah. see. And it was important for me. Um, some of the actors, like Oscar Hoppe, for example, who doesn't know anything about clubbing, who plays the character of Stefan, like the guy that Moritz is playing clarinet in the beginning with. Um, and for those, we just went to Herrensauna uh, once at the beginning of the shoot to just get a bit like to know how it works. This is about the actors. Um, then there was uh, the character of Ron, like the very muscular guy, played by Karim Howard. It was very difficult to find him because when you look for muscular actors, they are mostly like defined and thin in Germany, but they are not like really like these muscular types that you see in gay clubs. Um, and then in the end, I f it was a long process. I found uh, Karim and I think he did it very well. For the extras, we did it on the, the other way around. Um, I realized how important it was that all the extras in the background uh, are authentic and that we have enough, because this is always the problem when you shoot and you don't have enough extras, yes, or they just the run away after 10 minutes because <laughs> then it's boring. And I asked uh, Drew Lind, who made this film MM, maybe some of you have seen it. It was like also a lot of techno music in the club. Um, some like five years ago, I think. He's a friend of mine and I asked Drew if he could just take care of organizing all the extras because he knows the different parties and he knows also a lot of people. And then we were talking about all the different clubs and what kind of extras we would need for these clubs. And we had like a lot of Excel sheets and like organized all the people and moved them around. 
but then the parties themselves were really like technical shoots. Nobody was high or taking drugs. We just started at seven in the morning, like working. Um, and we put sweat on the faces. So the people usually, when there's talking, they didn't dance to real music. They just were dancing like silently. Um, it's a super different approach to yours, That's right? That's crazy. Yeah. You know, I, I thought like the film was like uh, the same as we did. So we just organized party basically, and the people like we had a club and we be, we we create a club and people were coming. So the it was a, oh, we had a team like just inviting people to come, come, come because it was also always complicated like to have like I don't know a full dance floor and it was like uh, complicated. So but the film is so realistic. The film, Anna's film is so realistic. I really thought that because it's really difficult to recreate like the ambience of a of a party like in a fictional with fictional means. So as I was pretty impressed when he told me before like the no it was like a Square professional shooting. It's uh, <laughs> not to take away from your professional shooting. <laughs> no, we, we did it also yeah. professional, but it was like I don't know, a bit like contaminated by the documentary, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> and we never but, cut the music. So yeah, w w I was also trying. I was making short films before and trying a bit, like to see how can you do it that the result is good. Um, but there was so much dialogue. We had so many different camera angles, like. Like the the film itself then works quite traditionally. It's a traditionally told story, so uh, you cannot like just make a party and film. Um, there was one scene, the the birthday party in the end of the film, where then there were so many extras, and at one point they thought it's a real party, and they just thought everybody was really high, so they got really high, and that was a little problem then. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these extras um, just want to have fun. <laughs> um, but that's, so it's it's quite interesting. I think you've already mentioned a bit towards this um, this conversation the the look for authenticity, um, and that of course needs to be depicted in a visual way. And you've taken quite different approaches. In your case, Anthony, you you've filmed very close to the bodies. You don't see much of what's happening around besides some movements of bodies. It's these close-ups. It's a dark environment for the club scenes, and with with um, with Hannes, we see we see quite well what the different spaces that exist there. So maybe you want to develop a little bit of on the, the conversations you had with your DOPs and how did you actually shot on on the well on set. Um, we 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 use like a two 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 camera like two camera dispositive. So um, they were like um, the, the, this idea of portrait came before. Like uh, it was like um, I don't know making something like about portraits and filming faces basically and bodies like and in a real abstract way because like the club we 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 we, we invent was a bit small and like the establishment shot of the clubs were a bit deceptive. So but no I'm. Almost joking about that, but it was really what interests me. Like we we did the club at the end of the second lockdown in France, and with all this mask thing and stuff, I really wanted to collect a lot of faces, basically. And for me, it's something that came to um, I don't know, like the memories I got after like making a party, like the, the day after, like I remember just the faces of the people, basically, not even the space or the I don't know the geography of the club. Like I don't know, everything's blurry, and it's not it's not what it counts at the end. So I really because of this, like in immersive like in insight yeah, that in, um, approach I really wanted to try to reconstruct the type of memories I can have like when I was partying and not only me like the people around uh, the people around me too so it was this like some kind of a monomaniac approach on faces and faces and faces and faces and believing that it's possible like with only close shots like to rebuild like a club and uh, to give with like the power of the sound like the the, the ability to to build the space too so that's it, and two cameras and a real party. So it was a bit messy about like the <laughs> direction and the light approach. It was a bit the same because we were not, like we were like having making a club, so we needed to be like a bit low light to have the people in the normal ambience of dancing. So we were making a little bit of corrections. We were working like you do with astero tubes. It's like um, things you can just uh, modify in a, like in live with just your phone. So the DOP was the camera on the it was changing. 
changing the light like that on the dance floor and just correcting a little bit, changing the direction of the light if we wanted to. But it was messy, so that, and we had like 30 hours of rushes, so it was uh, with two cameras, so it was like a bit like, they were an axis, but um, like a precise axis of mise-en-scene, but at the end, like, uh, we managed to do, we did all we, we can. <laughs> <laughs> and during the editing process, like we just been strict about like the type of material we wanted to use, like, and there were like a lot of other good, good like rushes with, uh, but the camera was a bit shaky, and um, we just decided to make like um, I don't know a, a movie like kind of um, straight and. Um, Exigent. I know it's not really good in English, like, um, but like um, with like um, an approach, like um, like an approach, like kind of like a good direction in mise en scène, and not like shaky camera and stuff. And we we only choose like shots who were like in duration, good in duration, and with the framing and everything. So it was like um, I don't know s several step process of um, choosing that. I think it came out quite super well. It's it's um, it's it's a very it's a very rare example of what that translates the immersive uh, experience of clubbing and and being dancing around bodies and, and people that you might know you might not know. Um, I think that, that paid out super well, and I would all be curious about the 30 hours of rushes you have there as a as a document uh, archive and, and register of of, of a scene. Um, maybe Hannah is even also develop on the visual approach. Yeah, uh, at first when you think you have a film that plays in clubs and it's about techno and blah blah and in Berlin, then you can imagine how it looks like. Um, a bit like a music video, but we tried to uh, have more like an outstanding perspective on the whole um, scene um, and also have some distance to what's happening there. There's, for example, this very ecstatic, ecstatic dance um, or um, like an ecstasy moment when they're all dancing under the shower. But we try to give a contrast like with the music that is not actually the music that they are dancing to, but more like a score music that reflects maybe a feeling. And um, also the lighting, um, we try to make it a little bit brighter than it is usually in the club. So you also can see things that when you are really in a club, you see, but the camera maybe cannot yes. see. Um, and the camera is very traditional and very like tender and uh, just looking at what's happening there. But then I tried to achieve like some authenticity through the emotions and like to the storyline maybe that you were have some authenticity and what you are experiencing in the club and that, for example, like trying to bring out these moments of ecstasy when you're really high on ecstasy, but through through the storyline, or um, there was this scene when they're dancing under this shower, and I mean, there's no usually showers in a club, but I just wanted to bring the emotion through this. And um, yeah, then also like, just making hard cuts after, the, for example, this scene, and then going on the rooftop and having a, like a bit lazy, tired after hour with like reduced music, and then bringing back the noises from the city that, like, a, the tram passing by or the church bell, which is just next to this rooftop terrace, and then we are all looking on these people still dancing after 20 hours. A bit like okay, maybe you should go to sleep, and um, so it's always like looking on from the outside on the whole uh, club scene, like my main protagonist Moritz does also in the beginning, but then also uh, giving an inside perspective. Like this was a bit our approach. I think it'll be interesting to talk about the choice of music that you've uh, you've made. Not only we've, I think you've just touched a little bit about it on the sound design. Um, how is it that you could construct an, uh, a film and a soundtrack that doesn't become rep too repetitive, that um, brings out the emotions that you want to convey in it? Uh, in the case of Anthony, if it's a durational experience, how that translates the kind of um, in energy development of the night, mm? and in the case of, of, of your film Drifter, how, how the music would then convey the emotions of, of what the character is going through and development. So. 
Yeah, uh, I could continue. Um, how can you depict a club in a cinema? Because in mixing, in sound mixing of the film, we had the problem that um, cinema is not really doesn't have the uh, speaker system of a club, because cinema speakers are mostly made for like voice or classical music, and we really pushed all the all the music in the clubs to the limit. Um, but it's not the same in a cinema. I realize it now, like seeing it many times in cinema, that all the, the really the bus just comes from the front. <laughs> Um, we were we were there yesterday watching the film together for the second screening, and and Hannes was mentioned that maybe it was a bit too loud uh, in in the cinema, and we asked to come down a bit because we were in the very back, and still it was very loud. Um, but then it also became quite strong during the the dance scenes later on, even if we reduce a little bit. Yeah. So it's how do you convey indeed? It's, it's a whole other talk how to convey in a, in the cinema technology yeah. space, the, the, yeah, the music of clubbing. Yeah, and then I uh, realized how important music was for this film, which when you write the screenplay, you're not aware that the music is important because you're, you're more focused on the storylines and the characters. Um, and then in the editing, I contacted, contacted Ona Friedrichs, who helped me a lot with choosing the right music. We had many, many different tracks for like as options. Do you want to mention who Ona is, maybe? Ona? Yeah. Uh, Ona is a friend work. of mine, and uh, she's working as a music supervisor um, for ZDF now, I think, also. And Ona knows many queer artists in Berlin. This was also the idea to like give a platform to queer music artists um, in the film. And now our soundtrack is made by trans people, by LGBTQ+. Plus. Um, music artists, uh, which I really like, we realized that when you use like techno in the film, because you don't have the, the time that you have in a real club, you're not like watching for two hours people just dancing. So you're the um, how you perceive the music is very different because techno evolves with time and it needs a lot of time. So we chose uh, we we chose usually tracks that are like changing in their atmosphere. Um, very rapidly, like they don't stay long in one thing, and also to support the emotions because we we there were a lot of tracks that are like uh, source music, so it means like music that is actually playing inside of the scene, like that comes from a source, but then they overlap with the with the score music um, to to support the emotions and. Um, Yes, for, I just want to rebound quickly on that. It's just, we didn't add any music supervisor on our film, but what happened is like um, the, um, there's, um, there's a DJ who made DJ sets with tracks. Like uh, We asked the DJs who plays during our parties to, to give us some, some tracks. And, um, and Charles, his name is Spencer, he's also like a label director, like a label uh, CEO. And, uh, he, um, and, he, and he made DJ sets with the, with, the, with the tracks, and it was exactly the same problem you evoke, like about like the duration. And we made with uh, with Joran, the editor of the film, we made a lot of cuts into his sets. Like it was like kind of a raw materials because he was like working like on two hours DJ sets, like with tracks, and we did it like maybe 20 sessions of recording. And uh, with all this material, we made some cuts like really like we cut some loops like to arrange the, the music to fit to the to, to the to the image so it was a process like of adjusting like between like the picture editing and music editing to find like the to find the right um, rhythm of the film and it's also like um, like um, there's a progression of like the, the night is progressing during the film and it was also the same we had like a lot of options like and it was like I don't know a long process like to choose how to make to make it progress. There are things like they were here for since the beginning, things we changed like on the last day of mixing. Like it was like possible to make like a lot of choices. So, so there were a lot of um, I don't know like um, well, yeah, you, um, a lot of. Um, of um, arrangement and choosing, like because like uh, it's repetitive music at the end. So and uh, we made it like people dancing, like the the, the DJs during the party have like the obligation to mix at 135 BPM, and now the film is like at 134. It's like really pre like because like there's also fast a lot of fast techno now, and I don't know like so we needed like to the people are on, on the same BPM always for the dancing scenes. So and at the end it worked because like uh, we rebuilt like the whole the totality of the 
soundtrack like there's not a, a music because we can't say to the DJ like you can't put this track you can only put tracks you have the musical right on it like it's possible to make a two hour DJ set with this kind of constraint so <laughs> the people like the mu we, we recorded the music during the during the during the shooting but at the end everything was just thrown away and we rebuilt like the whole score with uh, with uh, with this way of making it like with um, these DJ sets and stuff Maybe I can add something there. Is this club a trauma bar and kino in uh, close to Hauptbahnhof here in Berlin since some years? And they started and they had like a techno club or they also do dance performances, but they also have techno parties there or music like clubs with electronic music. And there was a real cinema with like real seats and a real sound system. And it looked not just like we put a screen and a projector and here's some seats, but it was a real cinema. And there were parties happening in the club. You could just open the door and you're inside of the cinema. And people were like just changing in between the club and the cinema all the time. And also they were uh, showing many different kinds of films. And it was for me, it was um, an amazing experience to bring these two worlds together in one place because then like also the conversations that are happening in the club are then happening inside of the cinema and also the music from the club enters through the door to the cinema. But uh, sadly, they um, removed the cinema <laughs> and now it's the second dance floor. <laughs> But I would have loved to show my film in this uh, <laughs> cinema inside of the club. I think that, that takes us to a, to a thing that I've, we were reflecting on, um, especially watching the, the Patrick Chiha film, um, La Bête dans la Jungle. I, I don't know if you've managed to no? know. Not yet. Yeah, it was sold out, as usual. Um, um, he, he mentions, I'm going to paraphrase him because it's, it's quite a beautiful thing that he says, um, this, this idea of what it means, that the clubbing and cinema maybe are similar experiences um, for the person who attends the cinema and who attends the clubbing. And what he says is something along the lines of, I think that my film is perhaps also a film about cinema, because it also takes place in, in entirely in a club, by the way. And because in the movie theater, aren't we all audience members waiting for a beast to emerge from the screen or the world and turn our lives upside down? So this idea of clubbing as um, hoping for something, waiting for the unknown, waiting to see what happens. Waiting is, not, I don't know if it, in clubbing it makes sense, I think it's more uh, delivering yourself to the unknown uh, and being open to it. And in cinema the same, you sit, you sit in a cinema just with your own self, but of course also um, in a collective space because you're surrounded by other people. Uh, and you're all gazing at a screen, not knowing what's gonna happen and hoping to have maybe uh, something that will give you an idea and change your ideas about something or a key to a problem or the key to, to life. You know? Or access to beauty, maybe. That's what I'm looking for when I watch a movie. But for me, the difference like, in between cinema and real life is like in cinema, you are in a safe space, really safe, like you are just images. And in life, it's, uh, it's more risky. It's more interesting. <laughs> No, but it's, that's the thing that I think it's, it's interesting the fact it, it indeed clubbing it's real life and um, we can only pretend that those times we spend on a dance floor are actually suspended of what's happening outside. No? Um, of course, bad things can happen, good things can happen um, and it's up to one's experiences to, um, to be there in a, in a way that allows for that unknown. Um, but maybe we can come in a bit. I, I, I wonder if you also see the similarities, basically, between the two things, seeming the going and clubbing going. Um, yes. I try to, to give experiences that you have in the club uh, to, to, to make them possible in the film somehow, again, like to, to really have this experience. And I was thinking a lot about, like, how does it feel? Like, there's this one scene, for example, when. Um, uh, Moritz is rejecting Stefan, the, the guy that he's meeting in the very beginning, playing music with, and then he's going to this dance afterwards. And then the, the emotions of this little talk before maybe come back in your, in your head. And, but you're just dancing like this, for example, or like you're all together in this car taking drugs and giving this experience of like being in a super close environment, like in a club toilet. But then I put it in a car, which is kind of the same, but different, but maybe easier feelable. Like, yeah. And we, for example, here, 
there's a little sound effect of someone opening the window and closing the window again when they're inside of this car. And when they open the window, the music, the bus from outside comes very strongly inside. And then when the window is closed, it's away again. Maybe nobody has really um, um, noticed it uh, consciously, but we tried with this opening the window and closing the window, we, we tried to bring this like being like six people together in a car, super ne close next to each other and like touching each other um, into, into cinema. And uh, then you were talking about um, the unknown in the club. And this was very important for me to, um, I, I, actually I, I made a short film that is a bit about jungle, like going through a jungle. And also this film, I see it a bit like Every scene, like you're completely experiencing something very new. You're always meeting people that then in the end do something completely different than what you expect. For me, the character of Ron, like the very big guy, um, who is kind of uh, in a straight relationship, but then also um, has some like homoerotic um, things or maybe some homo homosexual um, feelings for Moritz or. Um, and is also into like um, doing sexual things with Stefan, but we don't really know. So he's maybe for me the most interesting and or like yeah the unknown character that is possible in a club environment that that you meet in club environments. And also the possibility of change, changing yourself or being someone else for for the time when you are in the dark. Maybe you, we can, I think, yeah, we have a little bit more, more time and uh, maybe we can also open to the audience in a bit. Um, I think one last question before we open to the audience would be to ask you, what does it mean clubbing for you? What is it that you take out of it as, as people who obviously then were interested in enough to portray it in cinema? Can you repeat? I didn't understand, sorry. What is it, <laughs> what is it in clubbing, in dancing, in going to a club that for you um, gives you something? What is the importance of, of clubbing for you? Because it's a space of, uh, I don't know, I don't know, thing unknown could happen, like it's something out of reality. It's like some kind of a, of a, of a bubble where you can do whatever you want somehow in, in between some center types of limits which are different than the normal in the normal rules of society it's also a place that you can self destruct yourself as much as you want if you need to it's also a place that you um, i don't know it's um, it's it's for me it's somehow like a, a negative utopia it's like something like where all the people who are gathered here who gathers here like just believe for certain moments then, then to, that tomorrow will never happen somehow and I found that's really beautiful and it's funny because it's also reconnect to a lot of political questions for example in France we had protests in 2016 like, which were really important in France it's what's called Nuit Debout but whatever it was against the law but it gets bigger it was like the place movement in France there was a place thing like the, like in um, like in Athens like opening like on the place on the main main, main place in, um, in Paris and like um, um, one of the one of the um, slogan I don't say that in English slogans yeah slogan yeah was like tomorrow will never happen and I find it really connected to the experience of clubbing like you're here you are in the club the club closed you find an after party and the lights come out and finally the how the lights come down it's again the night and you are looking for another club and like you just all together and you just say no 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 tomorrow please let's just continue and dance and and take drugs and meet people and I don't know, have sex or do anything like, and it's for me like it's maybe me who are making this connection in between like the, I don't know, some kind of a political approach like of negating tomorrow because tomorrow is shit in, in, in the neoliberalism system. So, um, so that's what I'm looking for. It's, it's an expression, I think, of neoliberalism, the clubbing, the clubbing scene somewhere, an, an expression of neoliberalism, but it's also really beautiful because it radicalizes it until toward the hands, like really, really radical hands. So, that's it for me, I think. Beautiful. Yeah, this idea of neo-capitalism and club, a bit like this connection or this, uh, that they are both dependent on each other, maybe also, uh, is actually something I would, I'm, I'm working on right now for, for a next film. 
Um, but for me, it's also like a place where all these like class doesn't exist for some time. For example, the club as a as a place without class where everybody is equal, um, or maybe not equal. In, a, in a, like the bodies are very different. For example, at the same time, which I am talking about in, in my film, and then also nationality doesn't exist. For example, Moritz, in the very beginning of the film, he meets Eleftheria and her boyfriend Alexis, and they are both saying, he's asking like the first question, where you come from, and uh, like, Greece and France, and then he's like, ah, so you, uh, no, he's from Basque country, and then he's asking, ah, so you met in Berlin, but they say, no, we met in France, so it's just, I try, and also in my film there, uh, talking English and uh, German, like completely mixed. And this is an experience that I have that I wanted to transmit also in the film that the, the club world is a very international world where all these things um, for some people on this planet, not for all, but um, is a place where everybody c can come together um, to a certain extent. Yeah. Yes, um, thanks to, to, to speak about like this class thing too, like uh, it's the same thing in my film and I like this kind of equality space where like things in normal life which are which counts normally outside just these boundaries, these these limits just are different. There's a lot of rules in the club in scene, you I think you it's the, the you, 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 you your film speaks about that, like the inner rules of the clubbing uh, in the club in scene and there's a lot of rule in um, I don't know, like there's other rules and that's interesting and where like the class, the I don't know, nationality exactly, like it's it's another I don't know insight of, um, it's, it creates other rules, but it's really full and it's, and my movie is really about that because it's like a lawyer who meets like an Uber driver. So it's really the subject of my film actually. And there's no big deal. And I wanted to make no big deal about this class thing and switch it to a more existential point, of, point of, in a more existential um, approach also. Maybe I can connect to my main protagonist Moritz in this because when he arrives, he's a white cis gay guy who grew up in a, small town somewhere in Germany. When he arrives, uh, Stefan is asking him, like, and what do you do in Berlin? And he's saying, yeah, I wanted to study uh, art history, I think. But my mother said I could have some time, to, could take some time. And this time he's then using to club, to a clubbing. <laughs> but it's also a little bit a comment of like that, um, yeah, He's coming from a from a white rich background, and uh, this the the whole like the, my film plays in this group of mostly white cis gay men, and it's it could be more, but it's a little bit like also an aspect of my film. But maybe it goes beyond this the discussion for today. No, I don't. I don't think it does at all. I think it's it was the, the, the decisions you make of who you're portraying of and which subculture you're portraying are, are of course, uh, choices you've made on who you want to portray and who you want to insert in this space. And is it uh, is it a uh, fant 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 fantasy that you're inserting certain p people in there, or are you choosing to be quite faithful to the reality you see around yourselves and the realities that you embody and you live yourself? Yes, you, you had, it's, it's what I like in your film. It's really precise. Like you are speaking about like precise, precise characters. Like and the, and the, it's what they are. And yeah, you can't speak. You, you, you can't make movie with like characters who are everything. It's really important to be like precise and to be accurate and to to find some solution. And that's what that it looks like more or less wealthy people like uh, who are not like I don't know in the struggle of life in the in the film. And it's really well depicted, I think. And it's um, and it's interesting to go by the particular to to told something more existential, existential maybe. And, uh, yes, I didn't think about it too, but now you say it, it it's, uh, it's true, but uh, because it's well made, you don't feel it. <laughs> but that's, that's what talks are about, it's about thinking, you don't have to come with, with, uh, <laughs> uh, with definitive answers. Um, maybe we can open up to any kind of uh, questions or comments um, for the films and for Anthony and uh, Hannes. No, that's okay. Maybe uh, I can add a little thing that I wrote down because uh, we were talking before about time. And um, for me, it was imp like at one point I realized I really like queer cinema also because when I watch films that are a bit like from 20 years ago, um, it really shows me how may maybe uh, gay or queer, queer life in Berlin, for example, was at that time. And 
this is also important for, for, for me in my film, that I'm really curious to see how the film ages. Um, when I was writing the, the screenplay in like 2018, 2019, um, I chose to use OnlyFans. It's just mentioned in my film. Uh, maybe you know this platform where people can just earn money with showing like nude pics and videos of them. And it was not so big back then. Now I think it has become more important. Um, and I, it's just mentioned in one little scene, but I, I see already how this thing is like a thing maybe from, two, from the 2020s. Um, also the type of drugs that are used in my film, we changed it in, we, in the, after the editing. <laughs> To, to uh, now there's methadrone in it, which is very um, common now and what has not been in Berlin 10 years ago. And I'm curious how all these things develop in the future. And well, obviously, that's, that's how all, a bit like how films depict indeed whatever contemporary society is, is doing at that time. And it's, both of your films have a quite a careful approach to bringing reality inside the, where, you, where you're filming as fiction. So that's, that's quite beautiful. Um, I'd love to wrap it up with asking, we've been talking about who is inside the film and who is, um, who is it that you're depicting and why did you make it yourselves? Uh, but I wonder if you have, as writers of, and, and filmmakers, if you've, uh, when you're making the film, if you had any fantasy or idea of who you wanted these films to be seen by. Both your, your films, uh, respectively. You mean what the audience? You you mean? Yeah. yeah. If you had, what are for your expectations of audiences? Uh, for, for, for me, if I, um, if, I, if, I, if when I, when I mean like the, the creative process of making a film, I always think of the viewer as like an, an an abstract person who is not me, basically. So it's no no gen no gender no age nothing no 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 par no no particularity at the end. So for me, like I just think when I'm editing or writing, just someone else who has not me, not in my brain, like. Who it, who it could be, and so I hope my mommy, my film could be seen by grandmothers, and I hope it's enough open to be to be seen by anybody. That's how I project in the creative process, the viewer. Yeah, I wanted to add something to the general discourse about these topics. I mean, there's some written things and some discussions. Um, just to give an example, there's this talk organized by this doctor. Let's talk about sex and drugs here in Berlin happening sometimes. Just And I wanted to add something with this film. Um, I, al I see it as a film for um, gay um, or queer people living in big cities, but I always try to make it in a way that it's also accessible by everybody else. And I would be very interested to also get feedback from people who are not identifying as queer. So you can come out. <laughs> um, because, yeah, I wanted to, to, to bring a lot of uh, things that are happening in, in dark places a bit to the screen and have a discussion about it. Beautiful. I think you've both man uh, managed very well to uh, depict what you wanted and also to, of course, then give us th food for thought and identification for those who, who identify as, as clubbers. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for, for coming here. Yes, uh, thank you very much. And thank you, Anas and Anthony. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.